Welcome back. Pteridophytes are commonly called ferns which first appeared about 360 million years ago in the late Devonian period. Now there are about 16,000 living species. Most of the coal that we use today was contributed by the ferns. Welcome back and uh, welcome to the new video on stellar evolution in pteridophytes. Steel is an important structure in all the vascular plants and the origin and the evolution of steel occurred in the group of plants called pteridophytes or ferns. The early plants were aquatic, they were living in water, but gradually the plants became terrestrial. There are different groups of plants. The early group of plants are called algae, which are completely aquatic. The first group of plants which became terrestrial are the first land plants or bryophytes. In these two groups of plants, the vascular system is very weak, the conducting system is very weak, the stem is very weak. But the next group of plants, that is ferns or pterodophytes, are true vascular plants. They have a very good vascular system, they have very good steel. So thus, origin and evolution of steel occurred in pterodophytes, occurred in ferns and in this class let us understand the different types of steels and different patterns of evolution of steels in pteridophytes. The central vascular cylinder of the primary axis or stem of pteridophytes and also all the other vascular plants like dicots, monocots, gymnosperms is called steel. The word steel is derived from Greek letter which means pillar. Besides xylem and phloem, steel also includes pith and it is covered by the endodermis, the innermost layer of the cortex. The concept of steel was first given by Van Tygum and Dauliot in 1886. These two scientists, Tigum and Dowliet, proposed the stellar theory according to which root and stem have the same basic structure consisting of two fundamental units, the cortex and the central cylinder. According to Smith, in 1982, the steels in pteridophytes are classified into two main groups. The first group is protosteel. The second group is siphonosteel. So, steels in pteridophytes are classified into two categories protosteel and siphonosteel. Protosteel include haplosteel, actinosteel, plectosteel, and mixed protosteel. Siphonosteel includes ectofloic siphonosteel, amphifloic siphonosteel, solenosteel, dictyosteel, and polycyclic steel. So, these are the different types of steels that are found in different ferns or pteridophytes and this is the order of hierarchy and this is the order of evolution. What I mean to say is haplosteel is the most primitive type of steel found in the primitive pteridophytes like rhinia and polycyclic steel among the steels of pteridophytes is highly evolved steel. Protosteel is the most primitive type of steel. It is a non-medulated steel consisting of a central core of xylem surrounded by a band of phloem which is delimited by continuous sheath of endodermis. We find this in some of the most primitive ferns like Rhinia. There are four types of protosteel. You have haplosteel, the simplest form of the protosteel. Actinosteel, where the steel looks like a star and xylem is there in the center surrounded by patches of phloem in the actinosteel. We find actinosteel in case of xylotum. There is plectosteel, where the central core of xylem is divided into a number of plates and it is found in some members of lycopodium. In case of lycopodium clavatum, we have plectosteel. The fourth type of protosteel is mixed protosteel where the central core of xylem is broken into small groups. We find it in case of lycopodium cernuvum. 
these are the different types of protosteels we have in ferns a is haplosteel the diagram b is actinosteel the diagram c is plectosteel and uh, diagram d is mixed protosteel siphonosteel is the next type of steel the protosteel evolved into siphonosteel by the appearance of pith in the central region of the steelar region uh, by the appearance of a pith in the center of the xylem in the center of the steel a simple protosteel is insufficient to meet the requirement of larger plants hence the plants as they started becoming larger bigger taller there are two types of siphonosteels based on the leaf gaps they are called cladodo siphonosteel and phyllo siphonosteel siphonosteel is also classified into ectofloic siphonosteel and amphifloic siphonosteel in ectofloic siphonosteel the phloem is found on the outside of xylem there is a ring of phloem outside the xylem ring in case of amphifloic siphonosteel there is a ring of phloem both towards inside and also towards outside so there are two rings of phloem and uh, these two rings of phloem have xylem as one single ring in the middle so two rings of phloem in between these two rings of phloem there is one ring of xylem siphonosteel is also divided into different types based on overlapping gaps or non overlapping gaps they are solenosteel dictyosteel and polycyclic steel a solenosteel is a steel with non overlapping leaf gaps a dictyosteel is a steel where the steel is broken into small units and polycyclic steel is a steel where there are more than one ring of steel concentric rings of vascular bundles are found one after the other these are called polycyclic steel solenosteel is a type of siphonosteel in which the vascular tissue in the stem forms a central cylinder around a pith with widely spaced leaf caps so there is a pith in the center and surrounded by, by the pith there is a ring of xylem surrounded by that there is a phloem but there are leaf caps dictyosteel is a steel in which the vascular cylinder is broken up into longitudinal series or networks of vascular stands surrounded by a central pith you can see here the two types of solenosteel ectofloic siphonosteel where there is phloem towards the outside only towards the outside amphifloic siphonosteel is a steel where there is a ring of xylem in the center on either side of which there are two rings of phloem these are the two types of solenosteels ectofloic solenosteel and amphifloic solenosteel this is dictyosteel the central vascular cylinders central siphon of vasculature is broken into smaller units and in each unit there is a xylem surrounded by phloem and in this center there is a large pith these diagrams represent the polycyclic steel a here is polycyclic solenosteel b here is polycyclic dictyosteel you can see two rings of vasculatures in case of uh, polycyclic dictyosteel and we have two rings of steel even in polycyclic solenosteel solenosteel with the leaf caps in the case of dictyosteel the steel is broken into number of bundles now let us see the evolution how the different steels have evolved in pteridophytes the most primitive type of steel is protosteel and there are three lines of evolution in one line of evolution the protosteel evolved into actinosteel then plectosteel and it stopped there in the other line of evolution the protosteel evolved into amphifloic siphonosteel then it formed dictyosteel and it stopped there in the third line of evolution protosteel evolved into ectofloic siphonosteel and it later evolved into siphono u steel and the siphono u steel evolved into u steel 
Used tail is the one which we found in case of dicotyledonous plants where there is a ring of vascular bundles surrounded by endodermis. Each ring of vascular bundle has got xylem towards inside and phloem towards outside. And the further evolution took place where the used steel evolved into atactosteel. Atactosteel is the steel that is found in case of monocotyledonous plant where the vascular bundles are scattered in the pith. And each bundle has xylem towards inside and phloem towards outside. In this diagram you can see three lines of evolution of the steels in ferns. There are two theories as to the origin of uh, siphonosteel from protosteel. First theory says it is intrastellar origin or intraxylary origin. According to this theory, siphonosteel evolved by the conversion of central mass of xylem into parenchymatous pith. This theory is also known as expansion theory and it was supported by Boodle and Bower in 1911. There is one more theory called extrastellar origin of siphonosteel from protosteel. According to this theory, uh, the pith is originated as a result of the invasion of parenchymatous cells of the cortex into the steel. And this theory was proposed by Jaffrey in 1917. This is a brief account of stellar revolution in pteridophytes. For more details and further discussion, you can look into the description box of this video. You will get detailed notes and study that and learn for your examination. Steel is made up of a central vascular system found in the middle of the stem made up of xylem and phloem. Steel is a fundamental property of all the vascular plants from pteridophytes onwards. Pteridophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms all have got steel. There are two main functions of steel. One is the conduction of water which is essential for tall plants and support which is also essential for tall plants. Plants have evolved and adopted to develop more and more efficient steel our system in order to survive on the terrestrial mode of life. On a terrestrial mode, as a land plant, a plant should have a very, very strong stem, should have a very strong pillar in the center. And as a land plant, a plant should have a very, very good conducting system which can conduct water and food from the root tip to the shoot tip. And these two functions are providing very good strength to the stem and also very good conducting system is possible because of steel. Thus, steel is an essential component of all the vascular plants. Thank you very much for watching all my videos. Please like, share and subscribe. We'll meet again in the next video with some other topic. Thank you very much.